Today, guys, we're going to be working with the respiratory system. Remember, it's included for your lab practical. The respiratory system is structurally divided into a conducting portion and a respiratory portion. This is the upper respiratory system. This is for conduction. And the organs of the conducting portion form the airway extending from the nose and uh, down into the lungs. The organs that conduct air from the exterior to the lungs located with the thoracic cavity are referred as an upper respiratory tract and they include the nose, the nostrils here, the nasal cavity, the uh, pharynx which is nasal, oral and laryngeal and finally the larynx. Here you have then the external nares or nostrils. Then you have the nasal cavity. And between them, dividing the nasal cavity, we have the nasal septum. And this nasal septum, the bony part, is formed by the perpendicular plate uh, from the ethmoid bone. And uh, with the bomer bone, which is one of the unique bones in our face. The nose is leading uh, the air into the pharynx, and you have the uh, internal nerves here, creating a pathway for the air reaching the lungs. Then we have the nasal concha, superior, middle, and inferior. It's a thin scroll shape, bony structures. This is a um, structure in order to force the air over a large surface area for the warming of the air and filtering. Then we have the parasnasal sinuses. First, we have the eight mode bone. Remember, the sinuses are uh, structures filled with air in order to. Uh, diminish the weight of the head and in order to work as a, um, a voice resonance and for example here you have these cells filled with air in the eight point bone then you have the frontal bone with the same uh, features here the sinuses then you have another for the maxillary bones and finally, you have some from the sphenoid bone. Then we have the palate. This is a, a hard palate, the anterior part, which is the bony part. And posteriorly, we have the soft palate without uh, bones. It's on the uh, connective tissue and muscles here. Then we have these uh, part uh, for conduction of the air, the three portion of the pharynx, uh, from the nasal portion, the oral portion, and the radial portion, and the throat extending from the internal nares down to the larynx. Going to be three portions again. Nasal portion is going to be posterior to nasal cavity and extend to the plane of the soft uh, palate. Then we have the oral portion or, or pharynx and it's posterior to the oral cavity and extend from the soft palate to the level of the higher bone right here. And we have finally the laryngeal pharynx, which is beginning of the um, higher bone level and connects uh, with the esophagus here uh, posteriorly and anteriorly with the larynx, which is a voice box. Then we have the larynx. Uh, it's also known as a voice box because of the function of the vocal cords located uh, within. Uh, it is a, like a, a structure made of cartilage, box-like uh, organ that connects the laryngopharynx with the trachea. This is the trachea. This is a, a pharynx. And we have some per cartilages and a big one in the front. 
we have this is a thyroid cabbage which is the anterior wall the prominence formed by this cabbage is larger in males because of the influence of the testosterone and it's commonly called the Adam apple apple sorry the cri uh, cricut uh, cartilage this one posteriorly is inferior to the thyroid cartilage and contribute mainly to the posterior wall of the uh, larynx and then we have this third single cartilage which is the epiglottis which is composed of a elastic cartilage in order to in order to block the glottis when we are swallowing saliva or food or anything. This is the epiglottis then. This is the thyroid cartilage. These two per cartilages, the arytenoid cartilages, are working only for tensing the um, vocal cords. And we have these two uh, tiny cartilages, bare as well. They are the corniculate cartilages. Again, we have this one. This is a posterior one, the cricut cartilage. These are the vocal cords. The superior ones are false. The inferior one, uh, ones are uh, through vocal cords. And the opening between the left and right, it's called glottis. This is going to be the opening. And I'm going to show you in a second how we can see the vocal cords normally. Now we have the lower respiratory tract, which is composed by the trachea and the lungs. Uh, the lower respiratory tract, uh, each of these organs is internally lined by a moss, moist uh, mucous membrane, which serves uh, to warm and humidify the air on its way to the lungs. The sticky mucus also traps foreign particles and the cilia that lines that mucous membrane beats it in a, in a rhythm to form a belt of motion that transport the particles uh, into the mouth or nose for elimination. When you are able to cough or sneeze or swallow, the lungs are considered the respiratory portion of the respiratory system they, since they have uh, the alveoli where we have the exchange of gases. The trachea is called the windpipe. Uh, it's a tube-shaped uh, rigid organ and it's carrying the air uh, from the larynx into the bronchial three. And it's located anterior to the esophagus. It's extend from the neck into the thoracic cavity and uh, they have these cartilages, C-shaped structures made of um, uh, cartilage. These are the tracheal cartilage and they, these muscles, uh, they have muscles in order to in order to allow the esophagus to expand slightly against the trachea to accommodate swallowed uh, food. The trachea is lined internally with pseudo-stratified ciliated um, columnar epithelium, which moves uh, mucus toward the mouth. And uh, the tracheal rings terminate at the corina. This is called corina. Uh, this structure is called carina, and where the right and left bronchia arise. Again, this division is called carina, and you have here one of the most sensitive areas for triggering the cough, uh, the cough uh, reflex. Then we have the respiratory tree. It's made of the trachea, the primary bronchia, secondary bronchia, tertiary bronchia, and finally. It's going to be bronchioles and terminal bronchioles before the alveoli. 
we have the primary bronchi, the secondary bronchi or lower, we have the tertiary or segmental bronchi, and finally we have the bronchioles uh, before the alveoli. This is the respiratory bronchial, this is the alveolar duct, the alveolar sac, full the alveoli, and this remembers the simplest squamous tissue in order to be able to interchange cases with the capillary. These are the lungs. We have two lungs, right and left. We have the lobes. Remember the right side we have three lobes and the left side we have two lobes. As you can see here. And you have to know which is the muscles uh, involved in the respiration usually we use only the diaphragm but when we are inspiring uh, force inspire inspiration then we use the internal intercostals we use the sternocleidomastoid we use the pectoral minor and the escaline in order to force the expiration we use the internal intercostals uh, we use the rectus abdominis, the external oblique, the internal oblique, the transversus abdominis. And finally, we have the covering for the lungs. We have the parietal pleura uh, lining the thoracic cavity, is the outer membrane, stoching the ribs, and we have the internal layer, which is the visceral pleura, is the inner membrane, is covering the lungs. And between them, we have the pleural cavity. It's filled with liquid in order to avoid the friction. 